Hello, hello. Thanks for tuning in to the Chrissy Mayer podcast. We are on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud. And if you happen to be listening right now on iTunes, please leave a five-star review. It can be sexy. It can be creepy, but I will be reading the best <laughs> reviews every week so long as they are five stars. And, and thank you so much to the people who have already left reviews. I appreciate you so much. And I appreciate all my random listeners in different countries, like the two of you in South Korea and the 10 of you in Australia. Uh, and like, maybe there's one of you in Russia, you know, we're going to work on Russia. We're going to get through to you guys. Um, it's all good. Love you so much. I'm so excited to have this gal on the podcast today. She's an investigative journalist, a public health expert, um, a functional medicine consultant. We're going to learn all about what that is. Uh, she is best known as a filmmaker. She's the director of Vanishing Bees, which is a documentary about the declining bee population, which is narrated by Ellen Page. Please help me welcome Miriam Hinane. <laughs> That's great. Right. Hi. Hi, Chrissy. Happy to be here. Hi, Take this is two. great. So Miriam, <laughs> you're coming to us live from Costa Rica right now? Yes. Not live. Well, this is recorded, um, but it sounds better yes. to say that. <laughs> so you're in Costa Rica. Why are you in Costa Rica? Because I felt something was going to go down and I've been getting the call to leave America, although I'm very much thinking of going back so I can be on the ground reporting and serving in whatever way to restore our constitutional rights. But I was covering yes. Samoa and I witnessed 200,000 people getting mass vaccinated in a month. And then I was speaking to a uh, Ebola whistleblower, Jane Bergmeister. And so many of us, including Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, we're sensing something was coming, but we thought it was Ebola. We didn't think it was going to really? be the coronavirus. So Zach Voorhees and I did a man on the street. Is that January. your boo? No, that's. Yes. That is your boo. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. And he was the Facebook whistleblower. Yes. No, his... no, no, no. That's Zach McElroy. Never mind. I'm getting Google whistleblower. Zach's. I'm confusing my Zachs. Yeah. <laughs> you have a whistleblower boyfriend. That's the rage these days. You got to get a whistleblower. You got to get your whistle blown. I'm, I'm a whistleblower as well. Blew the whistle Because <laughs> you blow him. Bear. Oh. <laughs> you, whoever blows the whistleblower. Oh my God. That sounds like a porn category. I'm here for it. <laughs> and here I thought this was going to be the serious episode. What would be better than blowing a whistleblower? <laughs> Probably nothing. I mean, God, like, oh, you're so brave. <laughs> Let me see that dick. <laughs> so no i meant i blew the whistle on bear and i've been blowing the whistle on poisons all over in our water and our earth and our food supply and now we're receiving you know genetically modified disinformation poison so when did um and we weren't planning to talk about ag agriculture but this is a real thing more when more porn. when did you think that <laughs> um america's food started being like really fucked with because we've known about gmos for a few years now like everybody's well, seen the fruit that seems too big to be natural we joke about it and then you'll hear well gmos are natural this is how you get bananas with no seeds in them and this is how you get this is nor we've been told that it's normal but uh no, it's I not normal like i mean hybridization has been going on for a long time where they it's not quite genetically modifi genetic modification, but when you find out that Billy Boy Gates is also very much involved in GMO foods and poisoning our food supply. I, I learned about GMOs in 2007 when, or to the end of 20, 2006 when I started doing research for Vanishing of the Bees, and that was in the direct kind of um, core of what colony collapse is, but certainly, let's say, for instance, when there's nothing around and the bees are in a monoculture and the corn is tasseling, which is genetically modified, then they go and they pollinate the corn and we are eating genetically modified foods. What does that do on our body? And now we're contemplating an RNA, DNA, never been used vaccine, vaccine. that's going to be genetically modify our human body 
no thanks. Yeah, like what? And I've been reading about this that so Bill Gates he he sort of got on board with what what's this company called Monsanto like years ago, which is a big vaccine company. Monsanto's um, a food supply, and they oh Monsanto's the food agent the, orange right. that are now part of Bayer Crop Science, which is at the heart of systemic pesticides and the heart of my movie. Wow. So Monsanto and uh, Bayer bought Monsanto for sixty-six billion dollars, and what? arguably this is just recently. No, this is like uh, passes so fast. Maybe four years ago now. Okay. Okay, four so Bayer years. bought Monsanto. Yeah, and... Monsanto. Like oh, Monsanto. <laughs> Monsanto. Right, right. So, how does this tie in with your movie or what you know about? Um, I guess our food supply. Well, certainly GMO foods came across the radar in our research, but we focused on systemic pesticides. So systemic pesticides, meaning that the plant, the seed is, is enrobed in the pesticides and they're nicotine based, they're neurotoxins, and then they become part of the plant and then the bees take them back in the form of nectar and pollen and then it, it impacts the further generations. So it's just big, big pharma. And if you look back at the history of Bayer, at the history of Monsanto, and arguably Monsanto had a bad name and rolled into Bayer. Wow. So I say about, I don't know now, oof, maybe three years ago is the 10 year anniversary of making the film and it was coincided with or the 10 year anniversary of discovering that these systemic pesticides were at the heart of colony collapse disorder and it coincided with uh, rachel carson's silent spring 50 50th anniversary where she was blowing the whistle on ddt and systemic pesticides are five to ten thousand times worse than ddt and they're arguably not only killing honeybees but native bees birds bats and uh, butterflies, other, other pollinators, and they continue to be used in America. And then you find out that there's a deliberate dumbing down of Americans, of, of people. I mean, we're, we're, we can look around and like literally studies that show the, that humans are robbed of IQ points because of all these toxins. Wow. Because we are so generationally becoming, like we're kind of less bright or we're, we're not reaching our potential because our foods are not as nutritious as they were when our parents or our grandparents were, were growing up eating yeah. in this country. Yes. Yeah, the zombies are here. The future is now and uh, more so now that we're seeing a big lack of critical thinking skills. Mm. It definitely seems that way from looking at my social <laughs> media feed and I'm like, wow, Anybody who even a little bit thinks outside the box, anybody who challenges authority even a little bit is called a conspiracy theorist and you're crazy and you're disregarded. But I've been comforted by the fact that I've been seeing more and more people, the silent majority, as we say, yes. coming around and, and a lot of things that a few months ago were not kind of in our, our conversation are are kind of seen as normal like people are talking about the the sex trafficking pedo ring yes. people are talking about that people are wary of vaccines in a way that i didn't think that they would be which is very exciting um, yeah maybe because orange man is talking about operation warp speed that in a way just like with hcq if he pumps something then they just people automatically the real virus is one of hate is one of fear uh, yeah. Because to try to, let's say on a fa Facebook with my supposed FB friends that have known me for a while and then make a post on the masks and why they're useless and why they're muzzles. And I'm trying to liberate people from fear. And then they're calling me a racist or they're telling me I'm, I'm a religious sell it. Which is crazy or, because you don't look like a white <laughs> person. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what your ethnic I'm like, hey, breakdown is, but you I'm definitely proud. come off. Like you could even pass for Antifa if you really wanted to. If you just shaved the rest of your head, girl, you'd be in. You'd be like an embedded journalist. <laughs> so you do not like I come off like a typical like I have I could be a Karen, whereas I don't think you could be a Karen. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. A religious or a religious zealot, or they're talking about me in the third person on my own post. See, wow. we've lost another one to the dark. <laughs> like, fucking relax, assholes. Like we're just thinking. But it's, 
But the thing is, they're engaging in ad hominem attacks. Mm -hmm. No, like, like I thought for a minute, a hot minute that the masks were working, but I'm, I'm in service to the truth, no matter where that leads me. So even like, for instance, this whole HCQ presser debacle, I, I tried to reach out to Stella, I believe, Emmanuel, who was the black woman who was like a firecracker. I'm like, I'd love to like interview this woman. So I reached, first of all, I saw her Twitter feed, like her followers as like, meanwhile, I'm so shadow banned, but hers like just doubled. I mean, it wow. went, it, it skyrocketed. So I And what was she the, best known for? What did she blow up over? Well, to, she spoke at the presser yesterday that was heavily censored speaking about hcq and how people don't necessarily have to die wow okay so, right right she's talking about hydroxychloroquine yeah and this will come out tomorrow so this will still be okay relevant. Yeah, yeah yeah so she was the most vocal of of the several that spoke and so i reached i reached out to her the the number to her clinic there was no voicemail it just went dead her i called she she heads a ministry that went dead the blog i couldn't it it was not found so i reached out also on facebook and in here on both the the clinic and the ministry nothing so a daily beast story came out um, smearing her, but that doesn't mean anything to me. They're called the Daily Beast. It's the Daily folks. Beast. It doesn't. Really, they're kind of garbage people. Yeah, yeah but but I, so I'm going to look up another one of the doctors. So I was wondering, regardless, it served its purpose. We were wondering whether President Trump was going to retweet it, and he retweeted it. And then today in the presser, they brought up the fact that she's saying that you can um, you can have you can get demons by having sex with someone which I actually, you know, they talk about sexually transmitted diseases, but there's also sexually transmitted there's, de- demons. Yeah, there's a transference of energy for sure. Like, uh, talk about like, yeah, vibes. They say you are the culmination of the five people you hang out with. Tell me how that doesn't translate sexually. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're sexually engaging, engaging with like to- even toxic people, you know, I mean, we've all been in those relationships that are like, ugh, this person is like dimming my light, you know? So I yes. fully, I fully believe that. Um, you know, yeah, and, and the woman is receiving also the energy. So like them, you, that's your like talking point to smear her. Um, wow. Look, look at what we're dealing with. Uh, apparently Satanists, like it's a red, a big red pill to swallow. But when it you is. realize, yeah, there's cognitive distance. Sorry, folks, that you have to reconfigure your whole life. And <laughs> there really is darkness. It's, yeah. it's difficult to digest. Yeah, especially if you're not like, you know, I was raised Methodist, I was confirmed, I went to a Jesuit college, like would sort of go to mass with my friends, but like, I was, you know, felt like, uh, I guess spiritual in the, in the white girl going to yoga sense until really March <laughs> when I was red pilled. And yeah, once you're confronted w- with what is like very real evil in the world, I feel like, can you only confront like whatever your religion is or finding your religion again, or like finding God again? Cause it's almost like, yeah, you got to balance out that that negative by finding positive and being like, how can I help to put good back into this world? You know, when you Absol- when you, when you are red filled. Absolutely, me too. I thought I I considered myself. I was never really political. I focused more on food politics and big pharma, but and I would get kind of like secondhand fume politics from Bill Maher, which mm-hmm. I still enjoy. But it it became like the shit on Trump show. And in 2016, I was just becoming an American citizen from Canada. So I didn't vote, but I wouldn't have voted for Hillary. Yeah. Oh, God, I I didn't. I couldn't. I just, and I didn't vote for Trump either. I was was like kind of dumb and voted for Jill Stein just because I was like, whoa, third party. And then I realized that she put like all something like she put all of her money, like funneled it into a hot tub or something. Like she (laughs) just like was wild with the money that was raised. And I don't know, you know, now I know better, but I knew that I didn't want to vote for Hillary. And I, and that caused uh, actually some of my friendships to dissolve, which is kind of fucking pathetic, but that's, you know, millennials for you. Are you a millennial? Yeah. (laughs) Unforts. Yeah. Unforts. (laughs) (laughs) JK So, so I, yeah, so I didn't, I didn't vote. I wouldn't have voted for Hillary, but 
increasingly was turned off by the hate, like the, the, the amount of hate, even like I started defending Roseanne Barr Rose, and Alex Jones. And, um, and they're like, you're a Roseanne Barr fan? I'm like, I'm a freedom of speech yeah. fan. Roseanne yeah. today, you tomorrow. Look at where we are. That was in like, what, 2017? Yep. And then all the hate towards Orange Man. And I have not watched a president in my entire existence than President Trump. And, and I watch him every shit. single day. Yeah. And at least he's funny. He's he says hilarious. Some, yeah, he's hilarious. And these people do not watch him. There's a lot of gentle moments. There's a lot of confusion where you're like, where does he really stand? Obviously, he has to be stealth if, if this is not all political theater, which arguably, you know, there's, you, if you're a truther, you're, you're wherever the truth leads you. So you have to be mm -hmm. open to that. But I definitely don't hate president trump and i want to vote more than ever and i'm not voting for demon rats yeah you can't especially if you you know you don't have to be listening to him for a cue drop every five minutes but like yeah you do have to just <laughs> and it's fun it's fun to like get it's easy to get carried away with that but you shouldn't really fully devote yourself to any one group or movement it really you should be your own thing and you know, researching on your own as much as you can and reading as much as you can and not just leaving it to like your, your identity politics, your, cause I'm trying not to be, I don't know. Am I, am I even going to say I'm on the right? I don't know. It's like, almost like if you're even center, you're considered on the right, but it's like, I just don't want to be what I Pigeon hate hold. reflected in it on a different, you know, part of the scale or whatever. I think so, but like now we are labeled conservatives and the left arguably has become the right. Yeah. Because who's fighting for a constitutional, the constitution? It's we're not the, the left. We're the accepting ones. We're ones pro, pro yes. speech, pro all the yes. rights, you know? Yes, and the experiences that I've had at uh, my first conservative event, I went to film uh, with, the, with Mickey Willis who did Plandemic and Zach... And we met, you know, Mike Cernovich and interviewed Andy No. And, oh, yeah. I did an and, episode with Cernovich. Yeah. And it was so lovely. The event was so lovely. I wish I dressed a little bit more conservatively because <laughs> I don't think like I fit in a, in a box with like, I didn't always have tats and a shaved head, but they were very accepting. And that's uh, good though. That's like a sign. Do you know what I mean? Cause someone looks at you and judges you and probably thinks that you, you are a certain way, but that's, what's great. It's like, a, it's now becoming so diverse and uh, the kind of the right is actually the right and the center. Now it's almost, you're like, you're not fucking crazy. <laughs> you're like on the right. Um, and it, it feels like it's kind of expanding more and more to include more diverse voices where the radical left is like, if you are not singing that one song, you're you're kind of kicked out of the woke boat. The woke boat. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm into individualism and I'm into accepting people with your their idiosyncrasies and we're arguably here having a human experience and we learn through conflict. And I'm hoping that the coronavirus can, there is a great awakening. I do think we're the silent majority. I say the silenced majority, but yeah. I think that we are the majority and the legacy media that I was part of as a journalist is, is flailing and desperate and they're all desperate. And it's, it's, you know, to see Nancy Pelosi basically say like, whether he likes it or not, president Trump is leaving and Ugh, she's we disgusting. Have to, she she's is a trash bag. Ugh. She's a boozer. <laughs> she's a boozer. She likes well, a stiff one. Well, <laughs> are you talking about dildos? Is that a um, drink? I'm not. She probably likes it all. No, she probably. Uh, she looks like she hasn't had a dick in decades. No, I think so. Yeah. What was that quote you said about? Um, you heard somebody say about free speech um, and shadow banning. What was it like? You're not. You're not free speech. Oh yes. Sasha Baron Cohen, who last year read a speech that he did not write on behalf of the ADL uh, under the guise of like the ADL has to come in and like put the big tech companies in place. Meanwhile, you have Zach Voorhees, the Google whistleblower, confirming that these people, these, they've worked together. So Sasha said freedom of speech does not equate to freedom of reach. So that's exactly what's happening, that you can say what you want. No one's going to see it. 
But we, yeah, we all know there's been a lot of shadow banning. I mean, my friends that are comedians and porn stars that I've talked to, we've all known for years that there's shadow banning because we know we're not coming up in searches. We know that like, you know, my, my girlfriends that are porn stars, like their whole Twitter will get deleted over nothing. And, um, and, and our buddy Tommy G just had his Twitter suspended. It's still suspended. It's been that way for a couple of days now because he's been really hitting hard on these pedo rings and the sex trafficking stuff like that's what really fires him up and like myself as well but he goes real yeah. real hard in the paint um with this stuff so and, and and we know that it's come out recently that facebook talking about whistleblowers um zach mcelroy who i interviewed on a previous episode talked about he worked at facebook br briefly and you know had this body cam and and uncovered yeah. basically such a strong political bias that they would straight up delete posts of people who were conservative yeah. anybody who was supporting trump and they would proudly and happily delete these posts these are supposed yeah. to be facebook you know um content evaluators or, or, yeah moderators. and uh like and take take joy in deleting anything that had to do with trump or supported trump or like mm -hmm. any rally info and it was like and now it look at look at twitter following in the footsteps like i mean i don't want to personally take responsibility for chrissy teigen's um twitter meltdown <laughs> but i will say i mean you oh, know was, i was just a was block crazy. i was i was just a brick in the wall you know like yeah i did sort of point out that she deleted thousands of tweets and you know she sort of did respond and then yeah she deleted sixty thousand, and then she you know blocked a million people and she whatever. she she deleted that many tweets so i tweeted at her because i was checking her out uh i was because people had been saying she she had some sketchy pedo tweets right she so did I, yeah seemingly. and i was people had receipts and uh i looked at social blade which monitors um it's like twitter analytics and i looked and there was a big red number in the media column it said like negative to almost twenty nine thousand tweets deleted and i was like that's a fucking shit ton people that's here and there ton. might delete a couple like even me when i was like i gotta delete some of my jokes make sure there's nothing racist in there that was like 12 tweets tops and i've been on twitter since the Beginning. I delete typos. Yeah, that's all fine. That's normal. But 29,000 tweets is not normal. And I said, hey, looks like some celebrities have been really busy since Ghislaine Maxwell was arrested. Chrissy Teigen, I add her. Why that's did you delete 29,000 tweets? And she fucking retweeted me with a comment saying, actually, it's 60,000 tweets because I'm afraid of my family because people like you think you're, you know, MacGyver or what? And it wasn't even that funny. It was like, people MacGyver. like you. And I'm tweeting about toddlers and tiaras and you think you're a fucking journalist. And I was like, ugh, 60,000 tweets yeah. about toddlers and tiaras. You're the sick one. And, and by the way, they weren't all about the show. She would say things like, oh, like, oh, I don't know, like their stomach well, looks so this? strong. Oh, it was they, creepy the, shit. The Benet one where she's dressed up as as uh Oh as John Benet Ramsey. John yeah, Benet. like no adult should be like really that enamored well, who of toddlers tweets and tiaras. That shit? And, who tweets and, and that shit? She's not a comedian. And I don't buy the whole, I was joking. I was being yeah. sarcastic. It's like, and I know comedy. I've been doing comedy in some form or another for like 15 years. So it's like, yeah, that what she was tweeting out was not comedy. They were like obs, creepy observations. And, it, and, yeah. if, and if they were jokes, Chrissy, why would you delete 60,000 of them? Shouldn't you stand by them and say they were jokes? It's like, no, it looks like you're running and hiding from some shit. And how, you did a big overcorrection. Do you think it takes to delete 60,000? I don't know. I think she had like delete bots. I'm sure she put into a program, delete anything that has anything to do with toddlers, pizza. I don't know, anything. It was a big overcorrection. Uh, unless she really, because that was a third of her total tweets. You know? Shitload of tweets, man. Shitload of tweets to delete. Shitload. So she either hired a fucking army of deleters or she had some kind of delete bot. I don't know. But yeah, um, I, I interviewed Zach um, with Zach and I interviewed Ryan a few days ago and just listening, listening to stories of it's okay to have Jesus Christ. And I'm not religious. I was raised Christian, but I'm, I'm not down with, with defiling JC <laughs> or, you know, and then it's okay 
to have other sorts of tweets. It's okay to, to be um, threatening towards President Trump. Like yeah. it is really a deranged it's so syndrome. so hypocritical. And then we have Twitter sucking Chrissy Teigen's dick. Like literally days after she complains, I'm going to do something about this actually scary behavior because she had cute people and truthers coming after with fucking receipts. Like from 09, screenshots right. of her tweets. We're saying like really creepy shit, which by now, if you've been listening to the show, like you've seen these all and you know them and they're still out there. You can go find them if you haven't seen them yet. Not just like, eh. You know, I'm waking up with pizza on my chest. I, Brad Pitt handed me pizza. I fucking love pizza. I don't, I don't haven't <laughs> once since 2007 tweeted about pizza. So it's like you either are a fucking moron or you know about this code and you're doing a little wink to your cronies who are all yeah. in on it. And it's like she, there was a clip of her from Netflix saying basically she'd eaten human meat. She was saying to some guy, oh, would you try it if you were a really fancy restaurant? And the guy's like, ugh, no. And she's like, really? I would. Is that bad? Like she said it in such a way that you would listen and go, oh, that girl has eaten human meat before. <laughs> so we have all these signs pointing to yet, yet like Twitter bends over backwards yeah, and right? starts banning and suspending Q people. And they think they're fucking hot shit because yeah. they're censoring instead of looking into these creepy fox you know it's like everyone's yeah. just like, a celebrity i really feel like is like the death of authenticity and everyone's just sucking their dicks and everyone's and, everyone and it's I'm coming sure. out it's coming out yeah. i i wondered when uh gervais made that pre-corona at mm -hmm. the oscars i was like how that did speech. that work yeah did, did he write the speech? Did he have to clear the speech? It's not like he did it impromptu because they would have cut the feed. So what's the relationship mm. to allow, like, how does right. Hollywood al allow, have you thought of that? Like, I don't know what the well, answer is. I always is. know that like, it's yeah, I'm like, I'm somewhat aware of like what happens when you're like booked to host a show like this. Like, yeah, there's a script that you have to submit, but I imagine there's some improvisation, but Ricky Gervais is so big. Maybe they're just sort of like, it could have been a combination of, of him improvising a little bit and also them being like, well, he's Ricky Gervais and he'll, he'll make it. I don't and know. They right, to it, Tom Hanks and what, I don't know. If they you cut remember. to Tom Hanks looking like he was having like a fucking meltdown. They cut to <laughs> all the big pedos going, Ooh, um, that was very, it was strange, you know? And then later it was like, here's your script, Hanks. You're going to play mm -hmm. a coronavirus re um, recoverer, you know? Yeah. And then in, in one of the tweets, he says, I beat, this is like under quarantine. I, be I beat Rita by two, 201 points, which is mm -hmm. a reference to event 201. Really? He's using, he's, he's using, right. yeah, retweeted all of that. Um, and I'll tell you about Madonna, Madge. And then he, there was a corona typewriter. And then, yep. then I looked into, apparently Tom Hanks did a movie on typewriters. So he has a thing for typewriters. And it just so happens that one brand of typewriter is a Corona. Then you That's have Madge. Yeah. You had Madge. So there was one video she did early on, because I've been covering this since January. I think it was March, because I was already in Costa Rica. I arrived the day the Rona arrived here, coincidentally. And she has um, fever gun to her temple and then she looks at it and she goes 97.5 is that normal so months before there was a stanford study that stated that 98.6 is no longer the average body temperature folks it's hmm. 97.5 so i predicted that they were going to weaponize the fever and the cough i mean criminalize the fever and and the cough and weaponize this effing the fucking fever gun so wow. then the day after madge does this other video and it's like a world and it's bleeding and i i tweeted madge who's producing these videos of yours two days later announces that she's working with billy boy gates whoa okay so right so she's putting out these messages um did you it's, see those messages? Her quarantine diaries. Oh, I did a spoof on them. I did a, I did a parody. <laughs> I did a parody video about it. I got in the tub. I didn't have fucking roses. I don't have a budget here, so I cut up pieces of cardboard and put them in my bath. I poured actual milk into my bathtub. It probably was bad, but that's what we had. And I was like, because the water was very <laughs> white around her, and I put on every piece of jewelry I had, like <laughs> necklaces. Just, I looked gaudy. I drew my eyebrows like nowhere near where my real eyebrows are because I wanted to like really get 
get the look down <laughs> and i just was talking this. about like all her fucking properties you know just like making oh like no no madonna you're not a victim we're not all this together because right? you have four <laughs> more five properties you're <laughs> right you're in cahoots with all the top people Relax. Like what are you? What are you? Like I'm so sorry for you that you're under one of in your mansions, like yeah. in Rosefield. I'm so sorry up. that you're so incredibly, you're so out of touch. You don't even know how out of touch you are, you know. But then she became a, a prostitute for Billy Boy Gates, mm-hmm. as Tedros uh, used Lady Gaga to all, raise. All these celebrities are are they're getting messages from somewhere because just an example like my boyfriend's mom gives me her people magazine and I was about to throw them out until I started flipping through it and it was a picture of fucking Katy Perry and Orlando Br- Bloom taking a selfie and their sweatshirts said Fauci gang and I was like nobody <gasps> in their fucking right mind these celebrities are not gonna go out and get these sweatshirts made Fauci's I want to see that old I fucking loser hold on let me let me get it for you because oh, you have to, hold on i was gonna use this i was gonna bring it on the show but i'm gonna go get it hold on. oh please <laughs> okay oh okay then i you then i would magazine? love to i would love no, to rant on Weekly. fauci difference may 18th right because I was like, who doesn't enjoy a little Brad Pitt every now and then? No, I call them like, dirty magazines. A- I, Chrissy, I call them dirty magazines. This is, but sometimes there's real truth in here. So May 18th, Peel Magazine, I'm flipping through, and I was like, why am I looking at this bullshit? But lo and behold, okay, oh, look at there this was bullshit. A point. Look at this fucking bullshit. Tell me this is not propaganda. Look, this is Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom. I would love Fauci gang sweatshirt. I would love for you to take a picture of that and tweet it. I will. Retweet I will. I fucking will. Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom rock matching hoodies, paying homage to Dr. Anthony Fauci, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. This is May one. No fucking way are these cool cats getting sweatshirts made of a fucking loser, whack job scientist. You know what I mean? Like he. No one's doing this. Even if people, even if there was n- like no beef between him and Trump, there's no way this is happening. <laughs> right. This is, they were sent this. They were sent this in the yeah. fucking mail because Katy Perry is so MK ultra up her ass that she's literally a fucking <laughs> right. slave. She's putting on these stupid sweatshirts and taking selfies and they're trying to make this cool. They're trying to like reach Fauci what gang. housewives, the, the teens, the twenties, who, whoever's reading us weekly, whoever wants to learn about Oh, I guess that's so, me, actually. How <laughs> how about new love? How about the um the day the um, event where they're like a whole band of celebrities are like we're gonna give up our social media for a day so oh, that the, the real cube. doctors, you you know what I'm talking about? No, I knew about the entertainment industry black cube for a day, but that was for Black Lives Matter. No, this was to let and Julia Roberts was the the one who introed uh, Fauci, so they gave up their social wow. media. Shailene Woodley was one of them. And I was like, Shailene, your grandma, your grandma, like, picked herbs. Why are you doing this? Yeah. Why are you fucking selling your soul, this fucking Fauci? Six yeah. presidencies. He's, he, I call him the pandemic impresario. Absolutely. I'm just, I'm just writing a, a piece for Patriot Soapbox since n- no one in the mainstream media will run any of my stuff. And I'll, I'll tell you a story about Marie Claire. Um, about... Fauci, who is the vice chair of the Doris Duke Foundation, who is suing Imelda Marcos after Doris Duke. The name sounds familiar. Who is that? She's the shoe shoe lady dictator from the Philippines who um, over $2 billion went missing and she bought skyscrapers and art and had a shoe fetish. Mm. And uh, so- I I love a good shoe. (laughs) I like super. I say I'll, sh- I'll buy superfoods over shoes any day of true, the True, true, true. Um, As I drink a Truly. I'm not, <laughs> you would think I'm sponsored by Truly. I, I just about drink What is Truly? Um, what is that? It's a hard seltzer. I mean, I was big into White Claw, but White Claw has like a funny middle, not only a funny aftertaste, it has a funny middle taste. 
And so I was introduced to these truly lemonades and they're pretty fucking good. But then people were telling me that like white claws might be secretly drugged. So now I'd I'm have to see what these... the ingredients is because I'm known as the I food mean, Nazi. I know, I know. And okay, so I'm going to read them to you because I feel like there okay. might be some truly drinkers that are listening right now. Here we go. <laughs> Filtered carbonated water. Nothing wrong with that. Alcohol. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Natural flavors. Sounds no. Kind of generic. <laughs> Natural, Natural flavors, flavors is bad. What does yes. that mean? natural is a catch-all flavors what is that it's artificial flavors mm. passed oh, as god. natural citric acid that sounds normal that, right that could come from mold good god lemon juice concentrate all right sodium citrate no cane sugar well i don't i don't i'm really a food nazi i don't take Stevia sugar. sweetener I know. Why would I know you need sugar, sugar and I'm bad. sorry to sh- shit on your <laughs> No, you can shit on my drink. I'm almost done with it. So this has total sugars one. This is total. This is one. This is three carbs, 100 calories. This is why these things are sound okay, like Okay, yeah, so this is not a lot of carbs. I want to clarify that Amelda was um, spent two mil- 200 million, not 200 billion. Just want to clarify okay, that. Good. Fact check. But, Fact check by but, Snopes. But yeah, who has a collection of uh, coronavirus uh, articles that they're that they're uh, debunking? Fuck you, Sw- Snopes. Snopes um, is like five people in a basement. Snopes is like the biggest bullshit. I mean, we all know that by now. Such bullshit. Yeah, yeah. but people don't. Um, yeah. Even I love even when they were like, "Oh, the Wayfair thing was debunked by Wayfair." <laughs> like, <you're laughs> right. Idiots. Right. I reached out to them, like I told you in our first cut, that I took Tommy G's video and two other people to show, you know, like Tommy going through each of like, look at this uh, cabinet, look at this cabinet, look at this fucking pillow for 13 fucking thousand. Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? (laughs) So I call because there was a there was a notebook for twelve thousand dollars. So I call. Okay, it's it's a manager. It's a supervisor. It's not PR. It was the weekend. And I'm like, is this made out of like aborted fetal tissue? Why is it $13,000? And he's like, it's just, it's just a mistake. And I'm like, listen, I have a a health and wellness site. You just go in, you draft it, you change the price. Takes like what? Half an hour tops. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you have all of these cabinets that, what are they made out of? This was a lot of cabinets and and they're all named after missing kids. I'm like, does it come with a missing kid? So then I pressed him, I pressed him. And then finally he's like, and you know, I'm in Costa Rica. He he was a supervisor, but I'm in Costa Rica. So I don't know. There are no um, recording laws here. So I Mm. could can record people as opposed to like, if I'm California, it's consent. I have to say, may I record you? And usually I do one party for recording one party. Yes that i know yes (laughs) so here in costa rica i looked it up there's no nothing that i found so i got this guy to basically say i'm just reading a press release exactly you don't know exactly it's like i I had i had someone who works at wayfair who was leaking information to me that told me he was scanning products he scanned inventory and he scanned and he said it came up missing children no fucking way yeah wow yeah and um uh, anyway that anything was online that. about this that you've written like do you have do you have this had you put this in any kind of like, i put uh, it i put it i can share it i could okay. share my call I'll have to with tag you it. i'll have to tag it um when i put this out i'm gonna make a note because I'll the wayfair got i i get barely any views on my very censored youtube i can't i can't monetize shit hmm. and um the wayfair got like it's a got 3000 views which is a lot for for me that's very good that's that's 3000 is good for anyone yeah I thanks it's pretty good wow this is interesting so i feel like we've kind of been all jumping around a lot but yes. you know a lot so it's easy to jump around so you were trying to contact this woman that spoke out um and you couldn't reach her is does that tie in with this operation quack hack i have written no. down in my notes no okay. operation quack hack as many of us know that, you know, just like there's an initiative called Covey Pass, I say it's the Covey Pass. You can usher in whatever the hell you want with the coronavirus. So they have, the FDA 
has an actual operation called Quack Hack. Wait, what do you mean like, you can usher in whatever you want with the coronavirus? Like, mean once people are comfortable wearing masks all the time? A new world order, right. masks, okay. um, digital currency, Getting chipped, economic yeah. collapse, chip, like whatever you, you want. You can't fly unless you have your vaccine chip. Yeah. Whatever they whatever they're ushering as part of this either ten year plan or this like what comes first, the vaccine or the elections. Right. Because if we let coronavirus, which we have let happen, fucking just derail the whole economy and shut down the whole country, like if that's okay, what else will be okay, basically? It's like paving yeah, the way I th- from I think, bullshit. I think also because a lot of these uh tests and are all even remdesivir is is although it might be fda approved now but it's all under eua emergency use authorization so it's not fda approved it's under emergency even though arguably we're not in an emergency this is no less fatal than the flu i'm sorry we spoil alert we all die the predictive models were funded by gates totally Mm -hmm. wrong the PCR test is not a diagnostics tool. They're fucking with the numbers. They're bribe incentivizing doctors Definitely to put people on vents. Mm-hmm. It's it's all fuckery. It's yeah. all fuckery. And yeah, the, the hospitals, they get more money if they have more COVID patients. And we all know, we've all made jokes about it. Like, oh, this guy died in a motorcycle accident. Well, it's COVID death. So, I mean, that's really exactly. happening. There was a nine-year-old the other day, um, the strategist put that the nine-year-old was shot and it was classified as a COVID-19 death. So Zach wow. said, get on this. So I called the police. I called the sheriffs. They knew nothing of a nine-year-old. The next day I found that there was a 60-year-old who was, who was shot that was classified as a COVID-19. But this girl, then I called the hospital and Mary Garcia is her name, had talked to CNN and, and I'm like, so what did she die of? She died of coronavirus-related complications. Jesus. Oh, okay. What is that? What the fuck does that mean? Yeah. Does it mean you put her on a ventilator? Did she have yeah. comorbidities? Oh, HIPAA, we can't tell you. Meanwhile, well, in California, at least, because everything is on Zoom, if you want your drugs, you can't go to your, your psychiatrist. You have to do a Zoom thing. HIPAA is out the window, is what I say. It's like, so now you care about HIPAA and you can't tell me. She did tell me now we have to trace everyone that this nine-year-old has been in close proximity with. Well, the contact tracing. Yeah. Yeah. I I enrolled in the contact tracing program hosted by John Hopkins. I didn't finish it. I just jumped around and I clipped stuff um, so that I can get into the mind of a snitch. And for instance, they're, they're, re-educating people that autonomy is bad is, well autonomy doesn't apply under coronavirus because you're doing a, the greater good of humanity which by is making, communism <laughs> right yeah which is they already have this the social points bullshit is already going on in china where it's like let the people police each other you know there's this exactly. that's a real thing called social points like if you fucking i don't know jaywalk you get negative social points or whatever you're late with rent or whatever or any kind of bullshit somebody yeah, can call you out for social points it's yeah. happening it's happening in costa rica like for the people who are like how could this how could this be ushered out like all over the world because they're global elitists they've been planning this for arguably a decade and they have the same script why is it like oh I learned how to lavos mi manos in Espanol. Hmm. It's the same exact thing. They just introduced community transmission here yeah. a week and a half ago. It's uh, July 11th, Costa Rica um, Health Minister of Health met with the WHO, and they went from 31 deaths and they shot up just like in America. It's the same fucking script, different mm-hmm. country. Wow. So back, back to Quack Hack. This is an operation that's headed by the FDA. And it's going after quacks, people like me, that dare to sell things like vitamin C, silver, magnesium, MMS, which is a mineral salt. Is it colloidal silver? Is that what that is? I sell a processor that makes colloidal silver, and I sell a a 4,000 ppm chelated bioavailable silver that was made by a chemical engineer that graduated from Duke, by the way, and has tried many times to fund an independent study for his silver, but cannot. Fauci graduated from Duke 
and sits on the Doris Duke Foundation. Billy Boy Gates gives millions of dollars to Duke. So it's always um, met with they're at odds. Block. It's, so it's, we all know why vitamin C is good. Why is silver good for you? So silver is the natural antimicrobial that preceded penicillin. So born with a silver spoon, blue blooded, oh. that comes from silver. They would, they would, the aristocrats would take silver. So I used to get UTIs on the reg, like four times a year. Would have to, tract infection for yes. people with. <laughs> It's like you're pissing, yeah. you're pissing glass, folks. You get it sometimes when you don't pee after sex. Always pee after sex. Yeah. You always pee after sex. I always. don't care if you love the guy. You still got to do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> pee after sex. So I used to get them chronically, and I grew up taking antibiotics. So since getting on silver, I have not taken antibiotics in almost a decade, thanks wow. to silver. So the Army uses silver. The EPA lists it as a disinfectant, but wow. now there's, there's an attack on natural remedies. So for instance, yep. which I've seen because I posted just like on my Instagram story, something about herbs. Like I wasn't even trying to give a coronavirus, um, you know, remedy. I just was like, cause I'm kind of into this healthy shit too. And I was just like, check out these cool herbs. And they actually fucking blurted out on my stories. Instagram blurted out and said that it was like, T told me that I was like pushing fake COVID remedies. And I was like, I'm fucking not though. This is like, I shared it from somebody else's page and I'm seeing all these pages, these health pages are getting weirdly fucking unnecessarily censored because they, yeah, they're trying to say that it's, people are pushing their COVID advice, but it's not. Yeah, I got in trouble for writing an article that said that the best way to avoid the coronavirus is prevention. I use mm -hmm. the word prevention. Wow. So the FTC and the FDA came after me and I got caught in the crosshairs along with Jim Baker, Alex Jones, Dustin Nemos. And when I started the investigation, there were seven letters. We're at 127 letters. So because big tech, this is where the techno fascism comes in, because big tech and big pharma are now one in the same pretty much hmm. that a lot of these websites like the FDA have gotten facelifts. So you can go on the warning letters, let's say for my company, and you can tweet all day long against my company. So during quarantine, I had What's the your FDA, company, the bees, the bee company, no honey colony. Oh, honey colony. Right. It's a magazine and marketplace that's aimed at empowering people to be their own best health advocate, Ooh. having reversed my lupus and autoimmune condition, which Dr. And Sebi was all about. He was all about, you know, curing yourself through natural means and but herbs. you can't use the c word i can't use the c word and i'm not talking the other c word i'm Cut. talking yeah can you say that on your show of course <laughs> come on i'm a comedian so not cunt cure okay is, is the c word that i'm talking about <laughs> and uh so i got in trouble and during under quarantine, I have the FDA commissioner tweeting. I'm like, I'm so honored that you're shaming me. And then I had five, a total of five smear pieces, many of them from, wow. uh, from Media Matters, which is a George Soros backed company. Yep. So I was, wow. I was writing to the 40,000 people on my newsletter, thinking I'm having a private conversation. Yep. He then writes another smear piece, the smear writer, Eric, who's not a, a journalist, he's a political science major and calling me a former journalist. And then he went to a site called milled.com and pulled what I'm thinking is private information and then shamed me again. So wow. then I had, we had our money seized. So because these warning letters are up front and center, I'm like, I'm just going to contact all of these people and I'm not just going to collect their stories. So Genesis Church sells mineral salts, MMS. I don't know if you've heard of it. Jordan Sader talks, uh, Sader talks a lot about MMS. This guy has a church. He was on Alex Jones and he's like, you know how most people have, including our site, a disclaimer? He's like, I have a proclaimer. I can drop the C word all fucking day long. I don't know if you use the word fuck, but 
Do it. So he goes on Alex Jones and Alex completely doesn't even put the video on band because Alex got in trouble for selling silver. So wow. just like two weeks ago, I call Mark, the head of the Genesis church, who is um, ensconced in Colombia, has an office, I think, in Tampa. They, they bring a chopper to the house like for optics. They get the MSM to, you know, cut to, I thought this was a safe neighborhood. They're fucking selling yeah. salts. They're a church. They take wow. donations. They're helping people. They go into his house. They serve him a warrant. They bash into his safe. They You're don't talking about Alex Jones it. right now? No, I'm talking about Mark Grenon, oh, the okay. head of Genesis Church, who was on Alex Jones' show. Okay. Alex also got a, a warning letter, and I don't know if he got a letter from the FTC, also got in trouble. But this is the church. They arrest his sons. They bash into his safe. They take 8,000 pounds of the mineral salts and they make it sound like it's chemicals. The mainstream makes it look like, and let's say like Jim Baker, the mainstream, including me, thought that he went on Facebook and used the C word. So I was like, who's it? Nobody in this space that knows their stuff would ever say the word cure. Mm -hmm. We know better. Uh, from the F- FDA, right? The Fraud and Death Administration. <laughs> so that's what they they go by, or the medical mafia. It's, so, yeah. Um, there was another case where there was a doctor. Well, so Jim Baker, he was it was painted as though he said the c word, but in the he didn't say the c word. There was worldwide media. The guy got a stroke, Chrissy. Wow. He got a stroke, lost his business. So quack hack, the hack part gives them a cre- allowance to go and hack. They use the word disrupt someone's website. So another silver person, they woke up after 23 years of business and they're clipped at the server level. Oof. Imagine you wake up and you're, like your business is gone. Wow. An- wow. Another person, I spoke to them and I had a preliminary call. They want to remain anonymous. And now after I speak to them, five FDA agents had driven six hours. They were, I asked her, were they masked? They're wearing their masks so you can't see their face. They confiscate a notebook. They take her computer. They take a phone. They um, take silver. And there's a cop that was following her. And she's like, what, you know, why are you following me? And he's like, maybe you're, you're going to draw a gun on me. You're like four dudes and one woman. Uh, like, what? Wow. So then she had to tell the FDA, I'm sorry, I can't make the changes that you request because you took my computer. Wow. So these are real attacks. And, the, you know, and it even goes to death threats in some cases. This is really the medical mafia. Big pharma, you know, yeah. rules. What you were saying about the, the hit pieces, because they... Um, after Tommy G was suspended from Twitter, same thing, hit piece from the Daily Beast, uh, from Will Summer. QAnon Will conspiracy. Summer. He did, he did the, the smear piece today on I guess he's, Stella. Uh, and he's fast. He's Mr. Smear. Yeah, same thing. QAnon conspiracy theorist Tommy Gelati loves to talk, not just about this. And it's like, I don't think Tommy was trying to have his last name out there. So it's like, and also, I think made up this bullshit that he was arrested. Like, this whole hit piece on Tommy G, you know? Um, it's pretty disgusting stuff. And apparently stuff. he's totally trying to paint him as a, as an, a crazy person. I and mean, really it's like, no, he's just, just like you and I like looking for the truth and just right. trying to unearth some stuff. And yeah, so quick to put on this long ass article. So yeah, I was doing a Facebook live today talking about why folks did this press um, re- presser get banned and censored on all these social media how in, in such quick time? And then someone posted a Daily Beast. I'm like, wow, they're fast. And it was mm-hmm. Will Summer. Uh, Will Summer. Good old Will Summer. Mr. And Mr. Mr. Smear. He should be I a psychologist. <laughs> I, I, I shared a post that Zach did on the coronavirus on my Facebook page. And someone that follows me right away was like, how about this, this piece from Vice? And I'm like, oh. Vice used to be comes from that's Montreal. Cute. It's cute. That yeah, I'm like, that's, news. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, that's cute. Precious. That's cute. 
It is yeah. precious. Uh, they <laughs> went down the tubes long time ago. Uh, yeah. and, and they're like, if he was a real whistleblower, he would disclose those 95. I'm like, here's his website. Go and look at all the disclosures. Ask yourself why it hasn't come into the mainstream media that Google is using mind control tactics and is in bed with big pharma. Google is a drug company. Really? Basically. Yeah. Briefly explain. Technofascism. Technofascism. So Google, we all know that Google monitors what we say because you and I could be talking about quilts. And then before I go to bed, I'll probably see um, some kind of a Instagram quilting ad, you know, for sure. Yeah, Sometimes I don't use funny. Google anymore. F really? Google. I mean, I do use them for Google Docs, I have to say. Hmm. But what do you use editing, instead? I use Proton. Oh, for search? AOL. I use Quant. 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 How do you spell that? Quant. Q U W A N T out of France. And and then I sometimes use start page or I sometimes do a melange to try to okay. find. And when I want to look for um, matrix um, superficial stuff, I use Google. So you don't use Google because what? They are just because monitoring Google everything you look at. Does not have organic searches. Google ruined 76% of my traffic on Honey Colony. Wow. They are burying health sites such as myself. So I used to get 500,000 unique visitors a month. I built wow. my company from scratch. I looked at SEO. We, we were writing stories that were arguably in the future. And then all of a sudden I saw my traffic go down and we would have marketing meetings and be like, what are we doing wrong? And then I hired an SEO manager and he's like oh you just have to follow the acronym eat there was something called a medic update i'll tell you what eat is but the medic update are there was an umbrella of like your sites that fall under your money your life any websites that dare to make money off of your life um mm. like such as health sites and so he's like you have to adopt eat which is expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. And I'm like, well, we're already doing that. I have an advisor yeah. with doctors. I'm a real journalist. We source everything. We're, what? So then I'm like, you know, I'm going to look into Google. And then I found out, and then I dubbed it techno-fascism because in 2016, I started selling CBD oil and I got shut down by every merchant processor. So I got banned from Kiva, GoFundMe, PayPal. I'm banned from Airbnb. I'm banned from Instacart. And um, Jesus. Yeah. And I, I started. So PayPal shut us down. QuickBooks shut us down. Squarestart shut us down. Stripe shut us down. This is the merchant processor for selling CBD. Which and is so, the most common thing right well, now. Well, now it is, but in 2016, when you're oh, in the, no, it wasn't. Before Kim fucking Kardashian and Martha Stewart sell CBD, wow. yeah. you know, you're, you're a trailblazer. Now wow. everyone and their mama makes CBD. So we were on the front lines, and the truth was it was placed as a schedule, schedule one, even though the government has patented in, in the 90s, I believe, as a neurotoxin and, and uh, neuroprotectant. Then they were working with GW Pharma to create the first ever fake faux FDA approved Epidolex. And then they conveniently took What's it off. What's an Epidolex? Epidolex is their fake CBD for people with epilepsy. Oh. So then it fell under the purview of the FDA. And so that's when I, when I was saying all these things that were happening, um, techno-fascism came to, to be. And then I wrote a story and found out that um, now deceased author had used the word techno-fascism, but I, I would like to take credit for popularizing it. And so I found, I did some digging and I found out that Google Alphabet, Verily Alphabet is the parent company and a subsidiary Calico and Verily were involved in pharmaceuticals and that they were developing, they were part of the 10 year the decade of vaccines. So I've covered vaccines over the years and that they were developing a one size fits all flu vaccine, which is very scary given the strains change every year. Yeah. And people who get the flu vaccine, even people who get it are like, yeah, it works once in a blue moon. You're kind of more likely to 
get the flu it's from the vaccine. Absolutely. Absolutely. So then I was like, Google is a drug company. And then I went to a biohacking event uh, led by Dave Asprey and Dr. Mercola, Joseph Mercola was there and he gave a talk about Cinco Geo. And then he gave a talk welcoming people to boycott Google. So after wow. I, I'm friendly with, well, with Aaron Elizabeth, so I went to speak to him and I'm like, I call this techno fascism. And he said, out of like the hundreds of people in the crowd, I was the only one that came to talk to him about Google. And then shortly thereafter, I saw the Project Veritas video with Zach Voorhees and he was all in black. And I mean, he was blacked out. And then I saw him on, so it's going to be about a year, any day now. Then I saw him on Alex Jones and I felt a connection to him. And I'm like, I'm going to reach out to this guy on Twitter. So thanks, Jack. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he wrote back and then we, we ended up doing a four part interview and then ended up being here in the jungle together under lockdown for four months. How romantic. Yeah. I don't know if it was romantic. <laughs> I mean, it. I mean, I think that I at least will always look back at this time and there's a worse place to be stuck. And I think it was, we're both like an Intel force together where, you know, he'd be in, yeah, in his team. room and I, yeah. And so I, I really consuming all this negativity to do it with someone that geeks out on health, that geeks out on the same things that I do that has like a sixth sense, sense of humor yeah. like I do that likes to dance. Um, but I, I think that, you know, it's also hard to have been, I think, given being under lockdown for 24 seven, I, I, I think we did pretty pretty good for sure you're both still alive which means you passed <laughs> um what do you think are like the top three things you think that like health stuff or health um tips that are hidden from the public like i always I mean, my mom died of cancer two Sugar. years ago and she like she was diagnosed three years I'm before sorry that oh that. Uh, uh, it, it's rough but I feel like I learned a lot. And ultimately I feel like it helped me focus more on myself because I was like always worried about her. So it's like just trying to find the uh, silver lining. Right. Um, but before that we were big into going to the health food store together. And like, I was learning about body alkalinity and how important it is to keep your system alkaline. And I was doing a lot of juices and, um, I mean, like I haven't had a juice in a hot minute now, but what do you think are like the biggest? green juices or fruit juices? Cause I, oh, green, I think green. Yeah. I think sugar is the devil is, a, is, is the white devil. And I don't, I, I'm, I like to tell people I've been hit by a car. I've had to learn how to walk again. I was dragged 50 feet and oh. I reverse lupus and I've reversed fibro and I've dealt with mold toxicity and the body is an amazing thing. And food is thy medicine and the first and foremost is to eat clean and eat for your condition. So functional medicine is really looking at personalized medicine. So if you were, let's say my client and you had an issue. Like inflammation, like you well, inflammation, say, yeah. yeah, inflammation is mitochondrial dysfunction, insulin resistance. One in every two people today has a chronic illness, which means that we've paved the way to a perfect cytokine storm. By the way, you know, respiratory illnesses are the fifth leading cause of death and we die. And so if you have a chronic illness and you get the Rona, mm. then you're more, mm. you're more susceptible. But I would say sugar, I would say gluten, and I, I would the say- bread. All yeah, bread. I don't eat, I, I no stopped pizza. eating gluten when it was 2000 and- for 2000. Wow. I mean, like, I, mean, I like amazing. Tell, so I'm 47. Okay. What? I am 47 years old. Where do you put so. it? <laughs> I got to get on that or at least get on the Botox train. No, I mean, like, I got to <laughs> see, no. maybe I got to put down the trulies because this is to me, this is too good to be truly. <laughs> this is like, uh, it's fun in a can and it's only 100 calories. So there's got to be, but it has natural flavors and it has sugar. 
And uh, I'm really a food Nazi. One sugar. It has one can... sugar in it. But the natural flavors, that is a little cryptic. I do wonder what that's about. Yes, a little cryptic is a good way to put it. It's like Also, it's the just... citric acid, you can look. It comes from, oftentimes, from mold. Okay, wow. I could see Bill Gates coming out with a, with a, a line of hard seltzers, and they would just be like, have <laughs> tracking... <laughs> tracking bits in it like you swallow it's coming it, out it with goes in your body yeah meatless burgers i mean if there's fucking fauci gang sweatshirts there's gonna be gates gang sweatshirts you know before we know it then there'd be tomatoes hurled at them like dude do you think that fauci gang do you think he can take the bloom can take it outside of that room how far could they go <sighs> I don't know. I just was like, that blew me away to see that. I was like, oh, this. Do people really is buy up. this? Do really people think this is America's doctor? He has, I, he's a doc- he has a doctorate. He I has think so. I, I don't know. I see a couple people, like, I saw a family friend of mine. She's a musician, and she had, like, a post about how much she, like, loved Fauci and how he was hot. I was like, what the fuck is wrong? And this is, like, a Juilliard train. This is a smart girl. Like, basically a cousin of mine. And I was like, who the fuck is wearing a fuck Fauci? He's not even good looking. He's not even like a Clooney, you know? It's like, I'm just like, why are people romanticizing this fucking twat? Did you, you know? have it? Did you ask, is this for real? I need to, I need, to, I don't know. I was Maybe like, was do it, I talk to her about it? I don't know. Yeah, I, I because I want to know if that's for realsies. It seemed for real. This is not a person who jokes around, you know? classical musician but uh i don't know i just was like what, what? then ask her what is it is it the glasses is it the fact that he's collected 1.1 billion <sighs> during zika that that is it was it the in style spread did you see know. that no <laughs> he did a spread for in style oh my he's god he's like in a lawn chair with like with gla- sunglasses maybe that's what it was maybe she was sharing that and going oh and i was like yuck you don't even have ta- good taste in old men I'm like even your dad is better looking than this dude i was so shocked i was like, good lord okay, so allison fauci works for twitter really yeah his daughter and well, that's uh, interesting i went i went to i couldn't find her on twitter which i found bizarre i found her on linkedin and then I was speaking to Jason Goodman and uh, I was here. He was in New York. He found her. She only had like 522. So possibly it was a new account. So we both, we, we didn't tell each other, but we both followed her at the same time. And then he's like, I just got blocked. I'm like, oh my God, I just got blocked. And then my electricity cut. For <gasps> no. <laughs> uh, this is like was- ghost story type of shit. How how did, how in seconds do you the block that she blocked both of us like practically for nothing smoked. you guys didn't even tweet at her no no we just followed her holy shit what's her Twitter maybe I should follow her I think it was Fauci for the for the win <laughs> yeah so- but why would I ever follow that let's see what's happen let's see what happens if I follow it right now, Let's see if Fauci you can, I, for the win. Okay, Allie. Okay, you found protected her. Protected tweets. Protected tweets. Oh so no, I, it wasn't protected when I when I went. They were unprotected when you were they there. Were, now, now, they, for, now it has a mask on. Fauci for the win. Mm-hmm. Not good looking. Uh, yeah. <sighs> wow. Interesting. So should I try to follow her or no? Yeah, try to follow her. See what happens. Am I gonna get? Am I gonna go the way of Tommy G? Let's see. All right, I'm gonna follow her. <laughs> I hope not. I have a hit piece about me. (laughs) I've I've ended up in shadow ban Twitter jail for. Yeah, it's not fun. I discovered shadowban.eu and you can look up exactly to what extent you're shadow banned. And it changes by the day. Wow. Interesting. Changes by the day. Like two weeks ago, in like four hours, I lost 100 followers. And I kid, I'm like, I work for tweets, for retweets. Like I'm, I'm all day long researching and I'm just tweeting. I live in Twitterville. What's your Twitter? Love, you're following me. Miriam for the people. Oh, tell your people. Yes. For the people. Miriam for the people. Miriam. M-A-R-Y-A-M-H-E-N as in Nancy. E-I-N as in Nancy. So M-A-R-Y-A-M-H-E-N-E-I-N. Mm-hmm. So it's your name basically. H-E. Yeah. Okay. I'll well, I'll tag it. I'll tag you on it. 
Thank you. Will find you. Oh, I see. You're Mary of mine and shadow. Sh does it say shadow ban queen or something like no, that? No, it doesn't say queen. I wouldn't say queen. Oh, yes. Hashtag shadow banned. <laughs> yep. Mary of mine and Hanane. Damn it. Hanane. Say it right. Yeah. Some people like you're the, you know, because I go by B lady. And yeah. they're like, you're queen you're B. Queen. You should, you should be, you're the no, real queen I, B. That's too, I'm not a fucking diva. <laughs> I'm not. I don't like goddess. I, I just, for whatever reason, you I don't want to be I, a vaccine diva. <laughs> um, no shots be fired literally like vaccine shots, shots fired <laughs> oh by the yeah so let me tell you my marie claire story oh yeah yeah so it's been a while i used to write for penthouse i used to write Ooh. for the hollywood reporter i used to penthouse had a column called the unrepentant wire oh. so my first story for them was somehow i befriended the editor-in-chief peter block and I have had 13 encounters with triple Emmers, male masturbating motorists. So <laughs> I've had one encounter when I lived in Astoria, Queens. I think I walked past a guy jerking off in his car and I was at first flattered and then disgusted. <laughs> um, the first time I was like a chubby little 12 year old going to the tennis courts and there was like this like dilapidated like honda civic and i peered in it was like my first live cock that i saw and it it it, it sh and then he came around again so that kind of traumatized me oh. and then it was like you know you listen you hear a new word and then all of a sudden it's everywhere so then over the years so then i told him i was in toronto i was um interning for cn for uh discovery channel and I, it was almost like I had a, um, a, a radar and I was coming out of Sears. It was winter Toronto. I was in a parking lot and I turned around. I don't know what made me turn around. And this like young guy again in a Honda. So I joke that like Honda, if you're in a Honda, I have more if chances. You're in a Honda, you're gonna so masturbate I said to myself, the next time I, I, I see a male masturbating motorist, I'm going to confront my fears. Ooh. So I went and I, knocked on his window and i'm like are you jerking off and uh he rolled down like sheepishly and he's like yes. yeah do you want to join me and oh, i'm like God. no he was young though i didn't feel threatened and i told him listen i have nothing against masturbating but i just want you to know like there's i'm like first of all it's dead of winter what are you using as like what, ammo what here? are you yeah what, what's what's stimulating and he said, I'm looking at pretty faces. And I was like, wow. I felt like actually Precious, that that's it. all it takes. This is a man who's never watched porn. If you're able to just jerk off to the idea of a face. God it was not right. The good old days. Yeah. <laughs> you could just jerk off it's, to an idea. <laughs> imagine that. It was a long time ago. So, so then that's how I confronted. So I wrote this, this story and it was for, for me and I wrote the story and I sent it to the editor at Penthouse and I'm like, where do you think I could publish a story like that? And he responds, he's like, I'll pay you two, $2,500 and we'll run it. Oh my God. And Look I was like, you. oh my God, I just broke into Penthouse. So then I wrote several pieces for them, but then, you know, started covering Big Pharma and nobody wanted to run my stuff. Even Truthout stopped, w was compromised. So I wrote like, this Can piece. you go back to penises and less? <laughs> well, it used to be the good old days. I used to go to New York, used to meet with editors, pitch my wow. shit. Um, they were all often my ideas. And so I, I remained that fantasy of like, maybe the mainstream will accept me again. You're like so Terry Bradshaw with a shaved head. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah well I, so I wrote this piece on CBD and techno fascism and I dumbed it way down and I pitched it to Marie Claire and the my point of this story is they called me at my home office and they asked me this what are your personal views on vaccines oh god can you believe it on Did CBD you mention the vaccine stuff at all they looked at my website Chrissy <sighs> They looked at my website. There wasn't, it was not a story that I ran. It was um, my business partner that wrote a story on Merck, which by the way, the day after we ran that story, our entire website disappeared. Can't prove anything. Just can tell you that the whole damn website disappeared. Whoa. And um, 
we had to call Germany. Our servers were in Germany and we revived the, the, the website. But they killed the story. Marie Claire killed the story because of my personal views on vaccines. Wow. So what I, they gave me another excuse, which was didn't make any sense at all. What exactly did you tell them when they asked you? I actually, I actually said, I don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I don't call myself an anti. I'm a pro medical, medical freedom. I'm pro medical Ooh. freedom and show me a vaccine that's safe because those fairy tales, when you mm. go down those rabbit holes of the polio of the smallpox, it's a mm. whole different story. Do you think vaccines are responsible for autism? I have a whole shitload of studies that link um, like in the UK when they switch to fetal because they use the fetal fetus. Right. They get it from Planned Parenthood. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. It's a sustainable model. Mm -hmm. You take, you take the baby fetus parts and then you use it to grow your vaccines and then you put it back into the baby. Isn't that nice? It's the circle of life. Yeah. Yeah. So when they switched from animal cell line to um, aborted fetal cell line, the, there's a study that I found, one of many. I have like a whole slew of links that we save. Just like you save seeds, we save studies. And uh, linking uh, autism to, yeah, vaccines. Right, because if there's more autistic kids, I don't know, they can push more whatever medicine they think is going to cure that. Or what? Just make people more dependent on the government or all of it? Well, they, they often hide or they often put a lot of the vaccines under the pediatric schedule mm-hmm. because then it provides indemnification under the 1986 Act. And that's why you have a child that's 24 hours old and you're giving them a hep B that oh, has right. to do with sexually trans. Like what? Yeah. Wow, that doesn't make sense. No, it makes no sense. And it's like, listen, if you want to get vaccinated, get vaccinated. If you don't, if you believe in something called the immune system, when you know that the vaccine jumps into the adaptive immune system and has all these adjuvants, like a little, it's like a witch's brew. Let's take Mm. aluminum and a little bit of mercury, a little bit of latex and a little bit of chicken DNA. Can you imagine the witch? And she's just, and then let's inject it into people. I'm imagining Bill Gates with a witch hat in a witch costume. <laughs> yeah. Let's see him take his fucking RNA DNA vaccine. Let's see Fauci take these vaccines. None of Bill Gates's kids are vaccinated, I heard. Just like, yeah. Wow. Yep. Yes, I heard that too. I heard, I heard This is that. interesting stuff, Miriam. Um, easily we could do another podcast. And we will and we should. Um, I would for, love that. Yes, I would love that sex. too. Yes. Oh, how light vaginal, and fun. <laughs> vaginal dryness. I can tell you my stories on porn sets. You can Ooh. tell me. Okay, great. So please right now follow Miriam. Her Twitter is M-A-R-Y-A-M-H-E-N-E-I-N. Um, check out her company. It's something with bees. Like, honey colony. Honey colony. <laughs> honey colony. Honey colony. And for CBD, they can go. It's a organic liposomal. Because you know, if if you're taking if you're taking CBD, it oftentimes there's something called hepatic first pass, and it degrades eighty to ninety percent. Oh, so wow. this bypasses the liver and has Chinese herbs, and it's on simplytransformative.com. And then people can check me out on YouTube, which is my name, Miriam Hinane, B Lady. B Lady. Not the queen bee, just the bee lady. Oh, yeah. Um, just and bee. what are some people would be like, aren't you, aren't you that bee lady that made the film? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I'm that bee. What are, what are some things that CBD is good for? If just, if people just haven't, you know, dabbled well, at all. We, we have a cannabinoid system and it regulates homeostasis and we have CB1, CB2 receptors all over the body. Mm. So it helps create balance and looks over metabolism. I have people that take it for sleep, if they have insomnia, PTSD, Mm. all sorts of things. I cannot use the C word, but Mm. I can tell you that you can read the, the, the testimonies and they are really like just super astounding because we make an excellent product. What about for the eight 
to 10 pounds I've gained in quarantine. <laughs> well, I had to deal with that too. I think movement oh, and like, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't do any grains. I don't do okay. any sugar. I do ke- ketogenic diet personally. Mm. Okay. Have you you're tried that? Me that? No, you're going to send it to me. Does it involve Kegels? Because I'm on board if it does. <laughs> but you can do Kegels Kegel-genic. while you're practicing keto. Just eat whatever you want. Just do Kegels <laughs> while you're doing it. Can you, ama- can you imagine? I have, a, I have a perfect Are the gyms right closed where you are? Yeah, they're still closed. My Planet Fitness is not open. Uh, I have a Oops. mat. I have some weights. It's not the same for me. I mean, like I'm pretty disciplined, but I like going to classes. Yeah, me too. Me too. I loved Bikram yoga when that was a thing. So I have things to say about Bikram. Oh, he's a total pervert. He's a total disgusting human being. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole other podcast, but great yoga, great yoga without the carpet. Right. Right. Cause the carpet uh, makes the whole thing. Stenchy, stinky, stinky. sweaty. Miriam, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you, Chris. Check her out. Follow her. I'll have to have you back because we have. Yeah, more I'd love to, to talk come about. back. Yes, yes, thank yes, you. for sure. All right, you're the best. Bye. Thank you. Bye.